I'm Greg DeWire. I'm the head of business development at BitMEX, which is the Bitcoin Mercantile Exchange. And here's what you need to know about trading Bitcoin futures. Help me understand how these Bitcoin futures are going to work. You're betting on a future price of Bitcoin. What is the underlying? What's the reference point? How do they decide? I've seen a lot of different Bitcoin prices every single day. There are two main uh, contracts being launched. Um, there's the CBOE and the CME, which is coming out a few weeks later. The CBOE is, is uh, pricing against the Gemini uh, auction, uh, which uh, settles at 4 p.m. Uh, Eastern time, whereas the CME is looking at a more broad, uh, diverse um, uh, index comprising of uh, four exchanges um, uh, that's going to be referenced at uh, 4 p.m. Uh, London time. So explain to me, what are the issues for having an underlying like Bitcoin that isn't uh, something that's regularly traded on an exchange? Well, first of all, the fact that Bitcoin trades 24-7. Uh, whereas these contracts are only going to be trading uh, basically 24-5, um, uh, they're closed for the weekend, plus they have these uh, trading limits in place uh, of 20% uh, uh, hard limit uh, up and down. So potentially we could see uh, no trading occur if there's a 20% move of the weekend and it opens up limit up on Monday uh, and then uh, no one's going to be able to o open or close positions until um, uh, the following day. Which is likely. Right. <laughs> so this also introduces, um, I believe, five other um, concerns, uh, given the fact that this does not trade like a regular, uh, say, stock on, on an exchange such as the NYC. A market manipulation. Uh, also, um, uh, there's potential of systems overloading. Uh, there's potential of uh, DDoS attacks. Uh, there's hard forks. And uh, finally, the way that these contracts are margined. So market manipulation. How does that work? So let's take the CBO contract, for example. This is one uh, exchange which uh, com compromises a relatively uh, small amount of Bitcoin uh, dollar traded volumes globally. Um, so there are concerns that uh, there could be price, you know, adverse price movements due to this illiquidity or some you know, bad uh, actors in the space trying to move the price at settlement. It would seem the contract um, being more diversified on, on four exchanges uh, alleviates, alleviates this problem a bit. And what about the DDoS attacks? What is that? DDoS uh, basically means that um, you're trying to take down a system by overwhelming it with um, a large amount of traffic from various, various sources. Um, we've seen uh, various exchanges this week um, become partially unusable uh, because they've been subject to DDoS. So this could be a large issue uh, going into settlement and uh, we see DDoS uh, happening on these exchanges, um, thus uh, making settlement unlikely. And what about the margin? How concerned are you about the fact that your margin requirements are going to be in cash versus like on the BitMEX exchange, people are holding their, their margins in Bitcoin. So right. if you have a short position and Bitcoin goes up by 10x, <laughs> then yeah. you, all of a sudden your margin requirements go through the roof. And if your right. margin's held in Bitcoin, you're, you're covered. But if it's yeah. held in cash, th that's not the case. Exactly. It's not easy to cash out uh, Bitcoin from an exchange and thus use uh, to cover your unrealized losses on your short position. So um, this is going to introduce a very interesting element into how the prices uh, are actually going to evolve um, for the forward structure of the uh, futures curve. So explain to me what the system overload issue is. Recently, we've seen a number of exchanges um, uh, have performance issues. They run up to $19,000. Uh, we saw a number of exchanges uh, collapse under the pressure. And they crashed and they went down for half an hour to, to a few hours. Other exchanges had issues whereby you couldn't submit uh, orders, or if you could, you, wouldn't, you weren't getting fills back for, 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 uh, until several, several minutes later. As we get more institutional money coming in and arbitrage across the, the various exchanges between spot, futures, and so on, we should see more and more flow coming in. And this presents a real problem for the exchanges. How are they going to handle with this increased amount of volume? Uh, over the past year, we've seen volumes go up from uh, 80 times. And I imagine that they're going to increase by another time, uh, 10x uh, before the end of the year. So explain to me what happens if your underlying forks, because this is not something we see with any other futures contract. So there needs to be clear guidelines on, as to how the futures exchanges are going to handle this. Um, they could uh, think of a fork as potential dividend um, that they reinvest. So in fact, the NASDAQ has come out stating that they're going to treat this as a reinvestable dividend and they're going to look at the prices of some of the parts. 
Now, from what I understand, CME and CBOE haven't come out with any clear guidance yet as to how they're going to treat the fork. And this is a real issue because some exchanges might be listing uh, the original Bitcoin uh, under the st under na same, same name Bitcoin, whereas you might have some other exchanges listing the new chain Bitcoin as Bitcoin. So now you have different types of Bitcoin being traded, but still under the same term Bitcoin. So as a futures exchange, uh, where they're trading Bitcoin futures, uh, this presents a problem in, uh, in, in, in uh, pricing uh, the contract. Um, so they need to come up with clear guidelines as to how they're going to solve this problem, which they have not yet.